Hello and welcome to Magic the Gathering for Advanced Players. I'm Matt Sperling. I was going to start this video by saying, you know, if you're new to Arena, here are some things we're going to talk about. But in reality, I've watched a lot of top players play on Magic Arena, and a lot of the stuff I'm going to cover today, they're not doing, or at least they're not doing often enough. And this is stuff that's subtle in a way, but if you're not picking up on it and covering your track so other people can't pick up on what you're doing, there's a lot of information going back and forth in these exchanges. So I'm going to cover that today. Things that the system does automatically, how you can interrupt that, how you can figure out what your opponents got based on what the system did with their configuration, their setup. So let's dive in. Today's topic is going to be Magic Arena, kind of a tips, tricks, and shortcuts thing, but specifically about priority, yielding, and the hotkeys. I'll first go over what the controls are, the hotkeys, and then we'll go over how to use them and how to use them at an advanced level. Control enables full control until the next phase or step. Next is capitalized there because that's a button. You can press next, you hit spacebar, that gets next. That's going to get you to the next step and also turn your control off. Control plus left shift, and this is the left on shift on your keyboard, will permanently enable full control. So this will be hold full control. And that'll be there until you turn it off by hitting control again. Z, undo. Enter, pass the turn unless your opponent takes an action. So this is like you hit enter and then it's going to pass all the priorities where the opponent hasn't done something. It's just kind of stepping through the phases. Left, shift, plus enter, pass the entire turn even if the opponent takes an action. This is like an F6 in Magic Online if you've played that program. But if not, it's just saying, I don't want to do anything this turn. It's really important. It's really hidden. Left, shift, plus enter. Space is like clicking next, pass priority once. Alt F4, grab some free gems if you're out of gems. Escape opens up the concede slash settings menu. Hopefully you won't have to use it. You'll never have to concede, but, you know, it happens from time to time. Okay, let's look at this opening hand where we've got a turn one available shock off a mountain. That means that the auto tapper is going to tell our opponent we have shock unless we do something about it. So we'll talk about balancing it out in a moment to try to hide when we do have shock and when we don't. But with this hand, there may be situations where my opponent plays a certain type of land. Let's say a temple of mystery where I know I'm not going to ever use shock on my turn one on their turn two in those contexts I might actually want to lead castle M breath so that way the system doesn't tell my opponent I have shock so let's see how this plays out so I'd keep my seven Sparky's going to kick things off with the planes if I play mountain it's going to stop right there Instead, I play Castle Embrith, it's just going to pass the turn. But let's watch what happens. I play Mountain. See, now this pause tells my opponent, oh, either my opponent, either I hit Control or I've got something to do. Well, any creature would get cast. There are no targets for Rimrock Knight's spell, so really, this has to be Shock. So now I reveal to my opponent that I've got Shock. Now let's look at a different hand where we don't have shock, and now the concern is the opposite. If I play a mountain, I'm going to let my opponent know I don't have shock, and my opponent will never make a mistake thinking, oh, here, shock's coming. So here I'm going to hit control on my keyboard. That's going to give me full control. Over here on the right, it shows me I'm in full control. I play my mountain. Now I don't have anything to do, so I can just now hit enter. I'm going to hit control again on my opponent's turn. Okay, my opponent did that. Well, the jig's going to be up soon that I don't have shock. But, you, but you know, imagine the opponent said go or play something else. The important thing here is that it looks like I have something to do because I hit control. Now my opponent, I can just hit enter and clear that. Just as important, actually perhaps more important, than trying to conceal what we're up to and disguise our holding, figuring out what the opponent's got. Um, watch this turn and see if Sparky, our opponent, should be picking up on something. So obviously here, you know, I've got a couple options, but let's say I go Fervent Champion. Okay, Steam King gets a counter, but it can't make mana yet, and that's going to be important. Okay, right away, it's it's stopping me. i got to click Next. So, okay, opponent, okay, Matt's got something to do. Next, when I go into combat, why not? We'll send them both in. Okay, notice that it's giving me priority again. The system's giving me a priority, so I can do something. 
I haven't yet shocked this 2-2 and grown that, but it could be shock. It could be Rimrock Knight's uh, Boulder Rush. The opponent has to be picking up on this stuff. So let's see how combat goes. Okay, no blocks, first strike, and let's just say I don't do anything for the sake of argument. And the turn, if my opponent cracks back here, and we'll see what Sparky wants to do. Again, it's giving me a pause. All right, so now when I when I fail to shock this 2-1 lifelink, an opponent could go, okay, Matt's got Rimrock Knight because you can kind of eliminate shock, and again, the timing let the... So this is really critical as well. It's not only... I mean, the, the opponent could think, oh, well, Matt, maybe he put control all these stops. Well, that's pretty hard to do when you all these steps and all these phases. So it's very likely I've got Rimrock Knight in my hand, and that's just going to be very important for my opponent to pick up on. I don't know if Sparky did it this time, but if you're seated down across from me, you got to pick up on this kind of stuff. It's super, super important. For our next few lessons, we're going to switch to a Bant deck. That's a really good teaching tool for these types of things because it's got a couple cards that are that are useful for this. It's got the Aether Gust. It's got the Fabled Passage. It's got Mystical Dispute. It's got Growth Spiral. These are all going to be cards that kind of my opponent's going to be trying to figure out which one do I have. So let's take a look at this one, a simple one. I put Hollow Fountain in untapped. Let's say I think my opponent's blue green. I want to have the other guy. It immediately passes. So now my opponent, and it, it passed again when my opponent played Winged Words. So now my opponent's thinking, okay, my if they know my list, which sometimes you know either guess is possible. Well, it's fairly likely that I've got either guess specifically because Mystical Dispute. I didn't get a, a priority when a blue spell went on the stack. I would have. Growth Spiral, I would have had priorities all along the way. So it starts to feel like either Aether Gust or a pure bluff. And obviously we'll get to the bluff in a moment. Fable Passage comes out. Fable Passage gives you that, it has the activated ability that can be used. It kind of gives you all the stops. You're kind of in full control when you have Fable Passage out. And that actually plays to your advantage. I mean, if you get annoyed with having the Fable Passage out, you've got Left Shift Enter that we talked about earlier to get through the turn without worrying about it. And so it's a little bit annoying, but really it's an asset to have that because now the opponent, you become kind of unreadable when you have Fable Passage out. Something definitely worth taking note of. Okay, let's talk about Mystical Dispute, one of the most important cards for both the auto tapper and making sure it doesn't tap you out of blue, and for these priority kind of tells. When you've got one blue up with these slow control decks, there's not a lot that can happen, and all of a sudden blue spell goes on the stack, now you got the priority. So let's take a look at what that looks like. Um, here, I've played Temple Garden. My opponent has priority. I, this is someone I'm testing with for this video. I've asked them to stop. Okay, so even if I even if I hit Enter or say Go, so but click on those double arrows in the lower right or click Enter. Now, watch what happens. Even though it says Auto Passing in the lower right of your screen, once my opponent tries to cast their Omen, whoops, I've got priority. And that basically is a huge tell for Mystic Dispute. Mystical Dispute, rather. So what I needed to do instead was hit left shift, enter, because I'm not going to counter this omen end step, anything they could do end step. So then my opponent would get the opposite signal. They would think, oh, this person doesn't have Mystical Dispute. I'm going to go for Teferi. That's how you Mystical Dispute more Teferis than your opponents, by having that kind of you know left shift, enter. I know I'm not going to counter anything. It's a perfect play. It's a, it's a really nice play. Now, in this second game, the situation is a little different. I'm playing against the same player who likely to have Teferi in their deck. Now I want them to think I have Mystical Dispute. It's very important. If, the, if I can get them to not play their Teferi on turn 3, even some of the time, that's a huge win. So I can play an untapped blue land by shocking myself. That sends a pretty big signal I've got something to do. And in fact, if, it pass, if I put an untapped and it automatically passes, that sends an even stronger signal that it's not going to be the growth spiral but it's actually the mystical dispute so but what, I, what i'll need to do later though is somehow stop in my end step if my opponent casts an omen and that way i'll have a stop there so i'm going to put a stop in my end step i'm going to shock myself it's going to go right to the end step and i'm going to have to pass right away i click pass really quickly my opponent plays omen and now i've got a stop here so now I'm going to think, do I want to counter that? No, I don't. I take the stop off. I let it resolve. Now I, will, I don't have priorities here. That's, that's perfect. I have to take the stop off to make sure I don't have the priorities. Opponent's going to resolve the omen. 
then it's gonna be opponent's turn. And now on their turn three, it look it looks an awful lot like I've got either Dovin's veto or Mystical Dispute. So this is a really important bluff that I just pulled off. I think it's a huge teaching moment right there that a lot of people aren't seeing. Okay, now let's increase the difficulty. Let's just say in this case, I wanted to have Aether Gust up in case my opponent plays Forest, Uro, or something. But I, I, I want to bluff. The reason that I'm playing the untapped blue source being a Growth Spiral. So how do I bluff Growth Spiral? This is going to be more difficult than the last time. But here's the best way to do it, I think. So this is going to be hit control to hold full control. That way it's not going to auto just pass through. Pay two life. Okay, automatically right now it looks like I have growth spiral. Now, if I hit enter, it's going to pass the turn. And when I see it go to my end step, I'm going to hit control again. Just in case. Okay, now my opponent plays omen and I've pulled it off. Because now again it looks like I've got something to do even though I don't. I hit enter again. That takes the full control off and it passes the turn. Now it's my opponent's turn. And I've successfully made it look like I've got Growth Spiral, even though what I've really got is Aether Gust or some other counterspell. It could be Mystical Dispute, could be Dovin's Veto. So I've pulled this one off. All right, so now switching back to a second to thinking about what the opponent has and reading the opponent. So think about my opponent here and what they're going to understand happens when I play Growth Spiral. This is really important. I play Growth Spiral. Growth Spiral and Uro tell the opponent whether you have lands in your hand because it's going to leave that ability on the stack a little bit longer, even if it's just a second, long enough to understand my opponent either has a land in hand or doesn't. And it turns out that even the full control, left shift enter, even if you go, not left shift enter, that's past the turn, <laughs> left shift control, don't make that mistake, even in left shift control, it's going to actually not give you a chance to hold and think about, do I want to put this land into play, unless you have a land in your hand. So it breezes through that and control doesn't stop it. So what my opponent needs to realize here is that when I play Ghost Spiral and immediately it's done, I did not draw a land. And it's kind of an opportunity that in Paper Magic, you know, you have a chance to bluff when you draw a land there. Here you don't. But you've got to, your job as the opponent, you've got to be picking up on that. And you've got to understand this is a nuance of Ghost Spiral, of Uro, that it just gives that information away and look for a lot of different opportunities with these cards to understand what's going on with my opponent's hand. All right, let's try to put it all together here and figure out, okay, here's a situation where I've got playing at Sparky again. I've got Brazen Borrower, Fae of Wishes. There's gonna be different things I can do at different times. Let's see what information my stops give away if I just play casually. So I play Island. Okay, I've got a stop. Well, what does that mean? My opponent thinks, oh, maybe I've got the Spiral. Who knows? Um, opponent now plays a permanent. I don't have priority while that's in the stack, so it's not Growth Spiral. Now I get a priority when it's on the battlefield. That's a big tell for Brazen Borrower. So it looks like I've got something that I could have done main phase, like a creature. So Innkeeper, Fae of Wishes, fairly likely Innkeeper may, might have come out. So it's funny, like if you're putting it all together, my opponent kind of knows I've got Brazen Borrower, Fae of Wishes, even though I'm not going to want to Brazen Borrower this you know, little 1-2 cantrip. I'm just going to say my turn. My opponent's got two of my cards kind of nailed cold. So this is, again, where are the edges available? Obviously, deck selection is critical. Obviously, operating your deck with an efficiency. These are the core critical skills. But here on Magic the Gathering for Advanced Players, we're trying to get to that next level deeper. Understand on the arena, which is one of my favorite ways to play Magic now, you're going to have to manage this type of information. You're going to have to use what your opponent gives you. If you're going to want to play it at the top level, this is going to be really important. Thank you for watching today. The content's free. I like it that way. Two ways to support me. Subscribe to the channel. You'll get an alert when the next video goes up. Help yourself. Help me out. And then even more importantly, my sponsor, Channel Fireball. They've been a sponsor of mine for years and years. I want you to support them if you can. And this month, that actually means selling some of your cards and getting a 35% store credit bonus and entry into a drawing to win some awesome prizes so all month for the month of march channel fireball is running a huge give huge giveaway with their daily drawings you submit a buy list 25 dollars or more once they receive it you're entered into that daily drawing and there's different prizes on different days one of those days is going to include a black lotus magic's you know rarest and most expensive card there's going to be Foil Judge Gaia's Cradle, Foil Jace the Mind Sculpt. There are all kinds of different prizes. Entry into CFB Magic Fest events. 
That's a golden ticket that you can use later once the pandemic has calmed down and those events are back up and running. Support Channel Fireball, please, if you want to support this channel. But in doing so, you simply have to engage with their already awesome buy list that gives a 35% bonus this month. And so trade in those cards, get some other stuff you've been looking for. ChannelFireball.com slash buy list. And uh, thanks for watching. I appreciate it.